course, you're right. So it's it like, it's not always about. Mm -hmm. The difference between my test and his test came down to, literally, I did the extra and he didn't, so he could not give him the A. The A. So I, I apologize for him, but I, I felt so bad, but I'm like, I wouldn't have had the A if it wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. I admit it. But I did 100% of the homework. And nobody else in that class did. I was the only one. Several did majority of it. Mm -hmm. He held firm. To get the extra credit, you had to do 100%. Mm -hmm. What I've given you, pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Last week we talked about qualitative data and the charts that went with it. What charts did we do with qualitative? Frequency and relative frequency. Ah. Uh, no. That goes with both. That's okay. Keep going. What is it? Bias. Hmm. Charts. Oh, charts. Charts. Like the bar, bar plot. Yeah, the bar plot. And, and um, ah, we didn't do a histogram yet. No. Side by side. We did side by side, which is still a type of bar plot. Uh, something started with a P. Pareto. Yeah, Pareto. <coughs> and Circle a pie. Chart. When we're talking qualitative, those are the main things that we have. Quantitative. We have histograms. It's what we're looking at today. Remember, I talked about histogram last week. I said because there was a difference between a histogram and a bar plot. They look so similar that a lot of people don't understand the difference. I said visually, bar, the bar charts, the bars don't touch. Histograms, the bars touch. And here's why. Quantitative data, you remember, comes in two forms. What? Discrete and continuous. continuous. There's no breaks between. Is there a flow between qualitative, like if I'm starting to chart by days of the week? Monday? Yeah, it does flow into Tuesday, but Monday's Monday, right? It's a separation. Tuesday's Tuesday. All right. So this is the reason why qualitative, the bars don't touch, where quantitative, they do. Now, with the histogram, we also have things called Scatter plots are a more in-depth dot plot. But we have dot plots.
and we have stem leaf. Frequency and relative frequency works for both. You're going to see that today. We're going to do frequency tables again. But I could see in the future, hint, hint, mm -hmm. this potentially being a question on, like, say, a mentor or phyla. <clears throat> there's a, there's a. <laughs> so, what we're going to look at today is the histograms and the dot plots. The handouts talk about doing it by hand. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I'm going to talk about how to do it by hand. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Some of it you're going to have to do by hand. Histograms, if they are discrete and the data set is small enough, you do not have to have something called classes. Classes are the brackets on the histogram. And you'll see this term on there. If it is discrete and it's small, like the first data set that you're going to be working with is called siblings, it's zero through seven. So we don't need to put them into classes. We're just going to leave it as 0, 1, 2. However, the second one is continuous. In continuous, you must have classes. Now, when do we add classes to discrete? Let's say our discrete was between 0 and 100. Do we want 100 bars? No. No. That's when we start to put classes in, is when that spread or range is so big. But zero to seven is not that big. So we don't put bins in. Bins is what stat crunch calls it. The official term is classes. Now, how do we calculate classes? Calculate a class, and more specifically, the class width. You take the largest piece of data, mm -hmm. you can tell I don't feel good, I can't even spell. You take the largest piece of data, subtract the smallest, and you divide by the number of classes you want. Now, when you are running your own statistics, you will make that decision. And sometimes I'm, you will tweak it with your software. And that is something you'll see in, in part of the handout is they tell you to go to the applets and you can tweak it with a slider. You can play with it some, but do that after you have done everything else. This is when we come back together, I'm gonna to discuss it, why we do this. Today, I want you to do the class width of eight, I mean a class of eight. Now, let's say our biggest piece of data is 10. Our smallest piece is 4.2. And I want eight classes. So 10 minus 4.2 gives me 5.8 over 8 which gives me what is a decimal point? 75? Yep. All right, now, 
We don't use 0.735. We round it up to one. So our class width becomes one. We always round up to the nearest whole number. So rule of thumb. Now, when don't we? There are times you'll see it saying 1.5 or like a half. But majority of the time, we will leave it at one or two or three. And we keep it even. We keep those class widths even all the way through. When don't we? Remember me talking about the COVID? There's times we don't, like age groups. Sometimes we break the age groups zero to 12, and then 13 to 19. Why are we breaking it that way? That's not even, it's more about biological. Zero to 12, we consider kids. 13 to 19 is adolescents. But then after that, we go 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. Those first group, because of biological differences with the kids, and there's times we even break that even further, depending on what we're truly studying. But it's more it comes down at that point, the class was broken down because we're pinpointing into the difference in the biology where <clears throat> when we start playing with the class widths if you look at a study and those class widths aren't even that means they've played some funny shenanigans and you'll hear me talk about my BS deck <laughs> I talk about having a BS deck. You know, everybody knows what BS stands for, right? Yeah, I jokingly have a BS deck. I'm like, yep, don't make me pull it. Because I'll throw them cards. And I throw them quite often. It's like, I believe I have multiple sets of BS decks. <laughs> but this is part of what they did with the shenanigans in that study, trying to hide something they found. And again, it's not a causation, it's more of a correlation, is they start playing with the age brackets. And that's one of the things that caught our attention. They played with the age brackets, they didn't keep them even. The class widths weren't the same. Ah, why are you doing this? Right. Why are you doing this? So yes, class widths should remain the same, we keep them whole. So. 10, 4 to 10, right? Or 4.2. I can do 4.2, add 1, 5.2. 5.2 is not going to be included, but 4.2 is. This is interval notation, and this is how we set up our class widths. The next number will be 5.2, but this time it's included. That's what the square bracket means. Add 1 to 6.2, round it. And we keep going that way, 6.2, 7.2, and so forth. Why do I like, why do I like messing with decimals? Does it make it wrong if I do this instead? Does it? Your histogram may look a little slightly different than mine, but for the most part, it's still going to look the same. These are some choices that when you do your own statistics that you get to make when you're setting your class widths. All right? In the homework, watch for the cues with instructions. All right? Because they're going to be telling you to set class widths, do this, Make sure if it, if you miss it, go back, look at it. Did they tell me what number to start with? 
because a lot of times they're going to tell you what number to start with and students miss it. But in the real world, you get to choose. You get to choose. How many classes do I need? There's times, you know, see when, we, when you play with the applet, again, that goes to the end. If not, we'll, when we come back, I'll play with it a little bit. There's times that we, we may have said it at this and we're looking at this and we're like, yeah, it's not good enough. What if we squeeze it down, squeeze it down? We know this is, you know, this broaden it out. Right. That's what the applets are for is to see if we need to change things. Okay. And I'll talk more about that. Okay. But histograms. Dot plots, think of plotting points. Oh, hold on, I gotta finish that. When I do a dot, I mean a histogram by hand, I'm just throwing up some frequencies here. Very much like the bar. Where the frequency goes up, here's where the difference is. It's four to five. If I have classes, it's four to five. If I don't have classes, in other words, it's a discrete one, you read it by the left-hand number. But in this case, I have four to five. So it goes up to six. Five to six goes to five. This one I'm talking about the bar's touch. This is doing a histogram by hand very much like bar, except you touch off the bar before. All right. But if we do bar charts and histograms and all that, we want them nice and neat, don't we? That's the reason why we let our technology do it. But more of the important part is for you guys to understand how to read them. If it's a discrete one, this would be the fours. This would be the fives. These would be the sixes. If the data is labeled like that, it tells you it's continuous. That's anywhere between four almost to five, so it could be 4.99. That's four to four point, so it's all the four ishes, mm -hmm. all the five ishes, all the six ishes. All right. All right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's like all the four point somethings. We're good? All right, dot plots by hand. Again, starts with a frequency. Uh, zero, one, two, three is my X and my frequency is it's going to look very much like All right, at zero, I got four dots. Now this is expanded, because when you see this on the computer, those are all squished. At one, I have six dots.
for every time you get a uh, dot on a dot plot, for every time you have one that disappear, gets another dot, and they stack right on top of each other. All right. When we do it by hand, it looks more like that. When you look at the computer, you're gonna miss this. You won't add the scale inside. That typically what happens when you computer generate it. One, two, three, four, they stack right on top of each other. A scatter plot is more about the continuous because they don't fall straight on. That's a discrete one, right? So it said the difference between a scatter and a dot vary. Scatter plot is more in depth, has a lot, typical a lot more data too, all right? A computer generated one typically just stack them right, right dot 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 right on top of each other. All right? How are we feeling? Decent? Let's talk commands. Yesterday, since I was still feeling very rough, I did a Zen lecture. What in the world? My daughter had Netflix up. Oh, <laughs> oh gotcha. Night. What were you watching? <laughs> I don't know what it was. There. Are the commands. Side by side last week. So I couldn't remember them yesterday. I had no notes in front of me. I'm feeling bad. All right, here is our groups. Group one Preston, Faith, Abigail, W. So you guys get to move together and work. So you, Yep. So decide who's moving where. Group two. 